Hi, editing C here. Just want to apologize really quick for this video going up um, a week and a half late. I postponed this video going up due to the strike for Palestine. There are Palestinian books that are in here if you would um, like to read and uh, get those books yourself. I highly recommend getting books through your local library if you can, if not uh, purchasing the books, um, but also getting them through the library would help uh, out the authors if they are still alive. I uh, hope that you were able to participate in the strike any way possible. I didn't stream for the whole week. I posted Palestinian um, posts on socials and uplifted them um, and tried to boost them when I had the spoons and I didn't buy anything the whole week. I think we just paid for our electricity bill and that was it. And uh, I, I went to a protest. Um, so I'm going to have a link to the document that I made for Palestine with uh, a big list of books that you can read, both fiction and nonfiction, um, documentaries and movies and shows that you can watch, as well as places to donate to, people to follow, and more if you would like to support and help out the people of Palestine. Okay, enjoy the video. Hello tea leaves and welcome to a, another video. Um, for those that don't know me, hi my name is C or Kieran, um, spelled C-I-A-R-A-N, N, N, whichever, I can't remember by how to spell in sign language at the moment. Um, but my pronouns are he, they, or neos and I am a queer, trans, intersex, neurodivergent, and disabled variety creator and welcome here um i hope you have a lovely time zone wherever you are um please remember to take care of yourself if you have not drank eight taken your meds please do so right now take a little sip of water um if you need to put your glasses on for example because for i don't have mine on let's do that um please do so if you haven't taken a little screen break take like 30 seconds as i chit chat and take a little screen break and also um uh, make sure to just take care of yourself and stretch your bones unclench your jaw um fix your posture etc um just please remember to take care of yourself that's really important for today's video i am going to be doing a little library book haul because um i have a problem whenever i go into the library i get very um excited uh over enthusiastic um and ridiculous whenever i go into the library and i see books and i'm like i must have this book even though i haven't been reading as much as i would like and i um am behind but yes so i'm gonna like show you all the library books i have i have over 20 so yes I divvied them up into like a little bit of categories, kind of, as much as I could. Um, some of them don't really fall fully into a category. So we're going to start with the Palestinian books or books that are written by Palestinian authors um, because I am trying to educate myself as well as I am trying to also support the author since I can't physically buy books. Getting books at your library still helps out the authors, so if you are able to do that, I highly recommend all of my books are falling because these were holding them up, I guess. Okay, so the first one is a Wall in Palestine by Renee Bachman. Um, this one, I it's my favorite type of book with uh, this type of like um, page design. Um, I always love this. Um, this one's particularly on the West Bank barrier um, as opposed to Gaza, but this is what um, that is. And it's uh, Renee with only one E. Um, and then Bachman. So that's book number one. Number two, um, and apologies if I mispronounce any of these names. I'm do I researched and I'm doing the best I can with what I saw. So 
Um, this, this is Tasting the Sky, a Palestinian Childhood by Bitsam Barakat. Um, I forgot how to say their first name. Um, but yes, this is on his childhood and um, memoir. And I said his, on her childhood. Um, yes, that's one, number two. Um, then this one is a poetry book. This one is a very famous author. Um, this is Maya Abu Al Hayat's book. This one is You Can Be the Last Leaf. Um, of her poems and it's uh translated by Fadi Judah so this is number three this one is a smaller book um because it is poetry um I can read out a very small one really quick let me find one there are some like really longer ones that are specific to her uh, Palestinian experience, but, um, not fully. Okay. This one is titled, Oh My, We've Grown. Oh my, we've grown, and can tell a Kurdish tune from an Iraqi one. Whoever invented squeezing breast with a bra, that maker of this great prison should be prosecuted. And, that is the shortest one that I was able to find. Um, but yes, so this is uh, Maya Abu uh, Al Hayat's work. Um, she has many, many uh, poems and poetry books. So um, this one may not be the one that you are able to find. But again, she is uh, one of the more famous authors from Palestine. And then lastly, um, this is. In This Place Together, A Palestinian's Journey to Collective Liberation by Penina Alberg Schwartz with uh, Suleiman Katim. Um, sorry for the glare. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, yes, this is a Palestinian boy, um, but also narrated by an American Jewish woman. So this one has a uh, quite um interesting approach but it is um acclaimed by many palestinian writers from what it looks like on the back of the book so interesting to uh read this so yes um that is my palestinian books um along that line i have my what i'm gonna just say uh is like education books or like white education um, just learning about uh, different experiences. Um, this one didn't really have a category that fell in, but this was the closest. And this is called Build Your Village, a guide, a guide to finding joy and community in every state of life. And this is by Florence Ann Romano. Um, I wanted to see this and see um, because my big thing this year is just community. And I was just going to see... Um, what this take was on building, like, community, and it's on, um, not building an actual village, but, um, you know, the it takes a village, uh, lore, and so it is based upon that. So that is this one. The next one is, um, a, one that I'm actually really excited to read, and this is Microactivism um how you can make a difference in the world without a bullhorn and then it says small actions equal big results and this is by Amkari L. Williams um who is an activist um she is a black woman um and does it have anything else about her in the book um it also has resources in the back um of other books that you can read as long or as well as websites and um podcasts and stuff like that um so uh there is that um so i'm excited to read about this because um that's kind of what i do is micro activism um but i wanted to see what other things that i can do and um, cause I can't participate usually in protest as I am disabled and I don't usually have the energy and then they are also usually not, um, COVID conscious and safe. So 
that is this one that I'm very excited to read. But next is Living Resistance, an, indi an Indigenous Vision for Seeking Wholeness Every Day by uh, Caitlin B. Curtis or Curtis. Um, this one I did not see how to say that last name. Um, this one I genuinely got because it's very pretty. <laughs> um, I have not really looked into it. Um, Caitlin is a member of the Potawatomi Nation, um, uh, and she has done several, um, articles and stuff on indigenousness and, um, education, so we shall see, um, what this one is like. I, again, this was one where, yeah, you shouldn't judge a book by <laughs> its cover but this one I genuinely got because it's pretty so there's this one then this is uh another book of hi I am white and I need to read up on these things and this is lies about black people how to combat racist stereotypes and why it matters by Ome Congo de Binga P uh Dr. Dabinga, because they have PhD at the end. He is a black professor um, um, in intercultural communication at American University. Um, he works for the Southern Poverty Law Center, um, teaching diverse students initiative and provides leadership, educational, and diversity empowerment as a consultant. Um, and so yes um i actually am signed up for southern poverty laws mail um actually so this is one that i'm going to read because again i am white and you need to actively read and educate yourself to be anti-racist um i um have many books on my list to read also with um the acclaims on the back it gives me more things to read um like uh patriarchy blues and um awakening ladies leaderships and the lies we've told and other types of books to read and i bet there's probably resources throughout the book um so yes this is that one and then uh, this i have two on disability one is on disability um like definitely outside of what I know. This is by um, Sh Shad uh, Al Shamari, um, and it's called Head Above Water: Reflections on Illness. And I will just read the back to you. Shad Al Shamari is 18 when she is diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and told by her neurologist that she will not make it past age 30. Despite what she is told, by 30 she has managed to navigate education systems in both Kuwait and the United Kingdom, and inspired generations of students as a professor of literature. Head Above Water is the intimate memoir of Shahad, or Shahad's um, life of triumph and resistance. As a woman marked ill by society and as a lifelong reader, student, and teacher, charting her journey with raw honesty, Ashamari, um, Al Shamari, sorry, explores disability, displacement, and belonging, not only of the body, but of culture, gender, and race, and imparts wisdom of profound philosophical value throughout. It is, uh, it is people, human connections that keep us afloat, she argues, and in storytelling, we have the power to gain a sense of agency over our lives. And so that is this one. This was another one where um, the cover drew me to it. Um, this also was not in like the disability section, so I'm glad that I found this. Um, so there's this one. And then the other disability book is Loving Our Bones, Disability Wisdom and the Spiritual Su Subversiveness of Knowing Ourselves Whole by Julia Watts Belser. Um, she is a rabbi, scholar, and spiritual teacher. Um, and is a queer, disabled, and gender activist, um, and is a professor of Jewish studies um, and religious studies 
at Georgetown University and is also uh, in Georgetown's Disability Studies program um, and does research in many things. She is a wheelchair user and is a hiker. Um, so I'm also interested to uh, see this also on the back because it is also acclaimed by Alison Kafer, who is uh, the author of Feminist Queer Crip. Um, and I forgot that that was one of the ones that I want to read on my list. So I'm glad that it, <laughs> um, that I saw this. And this is also a very pretty and uh, the type of yellow that I like. So yes, this is Loving Our Own Bones. So that is the like education based category. Um, like there's still a lot of education books, but that's like all of the ones educating myself. Um, these two are on like intimacy and relationships. Um, so for those that don't know, I am polyamorous. I have two like main partners. There's someone that I'm seeing that we don't have like a specific title of our relationships. And I have many friends where like, I don't know if we're in QPPs or not, but there are many friends that I have like a close intimate relationship with. Um, so yes, so I'm Polly and this one is American Polly, which is a history of um, uh, American polyamory by Christopher M. Gleason. So I'm excited about this because you don't see many books on polyamory when you see um, books on relationships are usually like about monogamy. So I'm excited for this one. Then we have Radical Intimacy. Cultivate the deeply connective relationships you desire and deserve. And this one's on both sex and relationships. Um, and this is by Zoe Kors. So glad to see this. And this also has books on the back uh, by people that have acclaimed the book. So am interested to read this. So those are those two. Then I have like, I'm going to say like the sustainability category. Um, I have three books within it. Um, and they're just like on environment and uh, like, I don't know, like making, I, this one does not fully fall into this category because this was a uh, handmade and it's a scientist's journey into uh, a scientist's search for meaning through making by Anna Polsaski. Polsaski. Uh, Posazajki. Um, apologies for that. And this was like, uh, because, um, the scientists knew, like, you know, all of the things about glass, um, but she didn't know about glass blowing and, like, how to do that. And so, like, that's what inspired her to, um, like, start to, uh, craft and do things because she knew everything about glass uh, and the materials, but does not actually know how to like mold and use it. Um, so that's what inspired this. And um, I'm interested to read it. And so this kind of fell into the sustainability category because I'm trying my best to like hand make items. So this one was just interesting. Um, and now I'm not for, you know, like the trash cars, but this one is Year of No Garbage. Recycling Lies, Plastic Problems, and One Woman's Trashy Journey to Zero Waste. Um, and this was by Eve O. Schaub. Um, and how uh, she, in this, like, her little memoir of what she did to lower her um, garbage uh, output. Um, and it also talks about how uh, climate change is racist, which made me like go oh because most zero waste and like climate change are like very much in the white veganism um <laughs> category of things so yes and then speaking of like uh climate change is racist and uh very heavily uh disproportionately like uh black and uh, indigenous people um, and other people of color face the harm from climate change. This one is Wasteland, 
The Secret World of Waste and the Urgent Search for a Cleaner Future by Oliver Franklin Wallace. And it literally has like um, a photo of, I don't know where this photo is taken, but of a person of color because I don't know their full race because I can hardly see them, um, who is traveling through one of the giant trash piles that, you know, the white world did. So I don't know if this one is in India or in Gaza Ghana, because that is the two that it immediately talks about. So yes. Um, so I'm going to be reading this and uh, again, sorry for the glare. So yeah, this is Wasteland by Oliver Franklin Wallace. This one doesn't really fall into any category. Um, I honestly uh, also bought this book or not bought this, I got this from the library because it was pretty and I first thought it was going to be about Chicken Scratch, um, the handwriting. Um, but this is called Chicken Scratch and Lessons on Living Creatively from a Flock of Hens by Anne Bile. Um, and I know absolutely nothing about this book besides like, uh, broody thoughts. Um, what are you doing to feed your creative life or are you starving it and why and um just like other little weird things from chickens and also in the book it has little chicken feet <laughs> on the sides and i love that the sun is coming out and being rude so there's that um then this one i'm very excited for doesn't have a category besides oh my goodness I immediately like I snatched this when I saw it and this is A Life with Ghosts by Steve Gonzalez um and uh Michael Alosi Alosai um this is one of the guys from Ghost Hunters who which was my comfort show growing up I loved watching Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, um, just ghost shows and paranormal shows in general were like everything I lived for. So there's this and it's uh, tales, terrifying and insightful tale, or true terrifying and insightful tales from my favorite haunts. So I'm very excited to read this. Um, uh, I saw this was like facing frontwards um, at the library and I, I grabbed it so quickly. Um, then this is one of the two last categories, and this one is, um, kind of like just the craft category because I'm getting really back into crafting and, like, making things handmade. I don't know how much stock I'm going to put into this one because, like, this, again, cottagecore also ends up falling into white veganism. Um, but this is Cottagecore Simplified, a guide to countryside charm, comfort, and happiness by Katie Merriman. And this was also another, the cover is pretty. Um, and so it has uh, DIYs, um, little quizzes and prompts, and ways to engage with the cottagecore community, especially on social media. So I don't know fully, I haven't gone into this book yet, and how much stock I will take from it. Um, but there are pretty photos inside, so there's that. Um, then the other two, this one is So Sustainable. Make 22 plus stylish projects to reuse and reduce. Um, this was, again, I want to get back into sewing. Um, and I haven't sewed in a while. And I definitely don't have patterns. So this has like little projects that I can do. Like out of old t-shirts and, um, and just out of like my scrap fabric and so on and so forth. And because I have not sewn <laughs> in a while, um, this one was right next to it. So I just went ahead and got it and it's mending with kids. Um, it's patching, painting, sewing, and other kid-friendly techniques, which is basically so that I can relearn to sew. <laughs> um, this is by Nami Levy, um, or Levi. Um, so this was mostly because <laughs> it's been a long time since I've sewn and I wanted to have a beginner's guide. All right, the heaviest section that I have is the last one, which is my witchy section. Um, so these are the two books that I have been like currently reading and that I've had the longest. And so we have Urban Magic, um, A Guide for the City Witch by Diana uh, Rochelle. 
uh, or just Rachel. Um, this one is a deeper dive into um, urban magic um, because I live in a more popular area now than I used to. Um, and so far it's been interesting and I actually have the Ten of Wands as my bookmark right now. Um, and then I love this book, um, so I'm rereading it again now that I live in a more, like, city area. And this is City Witchery by Lisa Marie Basile. Um, this one, she goes into how, um, stuff should be, uh, more accessible because she is a chronically ill, uh, witch. Um, and she's mostly a writer. Um, so I really like this book. And this is, again, City Witchery by Lisa Marie Basile. Um, this one's not a witchy book, but because I am trying to connect to, um, my, uh, Celtic Gaelic background, um, this is a, um, poetry book of Cinderbitter, uh, just some Celtic poems, and this is, version is by Martin Shaw and Tony Hoagland, um, this also has a very pretty color. This is just a collection of poems, um, so far they're all long. Um, so I'm not going to read them, and I also don't want to butcher any names, um, because there are some names in here that I don't know how to say quite yet. Um, speaking of Celtic stuff, um, also this is one I'm not for sure if I will have to put much stock in because I haven't done my research into it, um, but this is Celtic Mysticism, Your Personal Guide to Celtic and Druid Tradition, Tradition by Tracy Long. Um, and again, I haven't looked into this author. It's, she's not on a media don't listen to list, like, um, some, which I will have my witch book, um, link down below to a, li like, a huge document of books, um, for witchiness to look into, but it also has at the top, like, authors to immediately, like, negate because they're racist, ableist, mostly racist, or just like lying to you. So there's that. Um, this one I've seen many, many things on social media about, and this is Shadow Magic, Unlocking the Whole Witch Within by Nikki Vandekar. Um, she's written several books. Um, this one says author of Practical Magic. Um, not like the book Practical Magic, that's by Alice Hoffman, um, but like the witchy book of like actual witchiness. Um, so yeah, I'm very interested in this because I'm slowly getting into um, Shadow Magic more. And then the last one, which is the fucking heaviest book, is Crystalpedia because I have not done this and this is by Athena Paracus uh Paracus apologies um this is the wisdom history and healing power of more than 180 sacred stones um so yes I again don't know for sure how much stock to put into this because it does have the chakra correspondence and uh chakra is uh, a stolen practice so um, that's a big history, but it does give me more insight on some things that I don't know, because, like, I don't know, for example, kyanite very well, um, even though I have, um, some blue kyanite pieces like that, um, so, uh, I will just look into it and see, um, it, it's not like a quick read because again it is fucking hefty there's 350 plus pages but like half of them are pictures so um there is that uh but that is the last book that i got and so yes that is all of my library books that i currently have um because again i get excited when i go in the library um, so yes, uh, I'm in my car because I had to give a ride for a friend that is at a doctor's appointment right now. Um, and so that is what I decided to do today. Um, thank you so much for being here. Again, please take care of yourself. Do all the things that I told you at the beginning of this video. I hope you are having a lovely time zone. All of my links are going to be down below in the description box. Um, I would love it if you told me the books that you are currently reading. Um, and, uh, yes, uh, grab a little bevy, 
to sip along with you for the day and thank you for stopping by my little cafe and I hope to see you in next week's video. Have a lovely time zone. Bye!